Hey, what is up guys? It's your boy Speed here and today I wanted to do something a little bit different. I was just kind of thinking like yesterday for instance, I posted two videos that were just like match analysis and that's my favorite thing to do in Dota, just analyze matches and talk about how to improve. But at the same time, I was thinking about the fact that there wasn't very many new builds that I really wanted to talk about. The last patch just didn't incorporate much and yes, it was a letter patch, unfortunately, even though it's a post TI patch. But I wanted to look at version 6.84 and specifically just kind of see how patches were back in the day. I picked this one relatively at random. I quickly glanced through it and I mean quickly glanced through it to kind of see if it was like at least somewhat of a, you know, a substantial patch. And yes, we got a, a full number patch. Keep in mind, a lot of the patches that we get nowadays are the, the letter patches. There was letter patches, I believe, in the past too, but this is a full patch, right? So either way, I want to see how significant it is and really just look and reminisce, uh, you know, maybe have some nostalgia. I don't, did I play in 6.84? I think I did. Oh, I think I did. Was 6.83 the, the sniper troll patch? It definitely was because 6.84 nerfed sniper and troll. Oh, that's funny. Okay, because I played the sniper troll patch, the mask Sanji Yasha patch. I played that one. I, that was like very early on into my Dota journey, but I played that. I played that. But all right, let's get into it. Also, I want to tell you guys that if you've been struggling with solo queue and you're looking to get to the next rank, I'm going to be able to help you. Like literally with the Game Leap website, I'm going to give you guys guides that are going to make it unbelievably clear on what you need to do. So if you've been stuck in the solo queue grind, you don't know what to do and you want to become absolutely broken. <laughs> but like actually you want to become much, much better at Dota and you want to take it more seriously, the Game Leap website is going to help you do that. So click the link down below. I'm going to help you get to the next rank and I'll see you there. Starting off, we have Abaddon. Borrowed time can now be cast while disabled. Oh, that was this. Oh, that. Wow, that's crazy that that wasn't like originally part of the ability. So what's cool about Borrowed Time, if a lot of you guys aren't familiar, Abaddon's ultimate, is it's specifically a counter to certain abilities. So it's really bad against like Tiny Toss and Avalanche because those abilities keep stunning you throughout the duration of this spell. But something like Ravage, the reason why Abaddon can be a Tidehunter counter, at least to an extent, is when he pops Ravage, if it hits you and someone next to you, you can pop your ulti, it will dispel you, and then you can use your shield and dispel them too. A lot of matchups that play out that way. So. That's that's cool. I didn't know that was actually something added into the game. Alchemist, unstable concussion countdown can now be seen by enemies. Okay, wow, that it's really crazy that a lot of these things just weren't in the game. Great quality of life changes. Now has an area targeting cursor. Okay, Grievous Greed now grants four times bounty earned from ruins. Oh no, this was the beginning of that patch. Oh my, I remember that patch. It's crazy how quickly things come back to you. Was this the BS Oct? Was this the the patch where Octarine got added into the game? I guess maybe we'll see down the line. I don't know if I'm gonna cover literally everything because this is pretty huge, but I'll, I'm gonna go through at least a good amount of the heroes and then the items. This patch was nuts. If you got four bounty runes, your alchemist would just instantly have like, how much gold was it? Oh no, you couldn't get four bounty runes. There was two, right? But if you got both the bounty runes because they were worth more, it was, or was it, or was this uh, when bounty runes were in the river? Oh, now I can't remember. But basically you would get a heinous amount of gold. You would get a heinous amount of gold. It was completely disgusting. Alchemist can now cast Aghanim Scepter, right. And this is why people largely, play. I don't know if this is the Octarine patch, but you could go Radiance Manta. Once again, it's hard for me to exactly pinpoint when that was the case, but you could go Radiance Manta. And Manta Illusions, a lot of you guys might not know this about Alchemist. It's a cool little thing, is uh, Manta Illusions from Alk do not give you bonus Grievous Greed Gold. Back in the day, they did. And for a long time, they did. That wasn't something that was removed quickly, if I'm not mistaken. You could buy Manta on Elk, and that would allow you to just accrue a disturbing amount of gold. Like, this hero farmed... If you think Alchemist farms fast right now, you have not played with old Elk. You have not played with... If you think current Elk is annoying, you have not played with the old Elk. This hero was so dumb. Chilling buff now can be removed by clicking on the buff icon above their help. Okay, I think it was a different ability. This is when Chilling Touch was cast in an AoE and basically was really good in tri-lanes. It was picked with tri-lanes a lot because you could put Chilling Touch on your teammates and you could all click at the same time. Berserker's Call cast point was uh, increased, so it made it worse. Wow, so Beastmaster got a pretty major buff this patch. Uh, Wild Axe's cast point improved by quite a bit. Call of the Wild Boar attack point from 0.633 to 0.5 and 4 damage is pretty notable. Here's an interesting one. So Broodmother used to have this ability back in the day where when you auto attack someone, they would gain miss chance and get slowed if I'm not mistaken. Uh, and that was called incapacitating bite. But back in the day, it was, a, it was a unique attack modifier. And essentially for a long period of Dota's history, 
there was just multiple items that you could not buy with each other. I remember it used to be so bad where I know Deso was, Scotty was, so you can never go Scotty Deso, which to be fair, like no one does that anyway now. But there was, there was a bunch of other ones too. I can't remember them all, but there was a lot. I, part of me wants to think that Maelstrom was too. I, I'm not sure about that. Maybe you guys could clarify in the comments. I'm sure a lot of you guys have more Dota knowledge than me when it comes to these older patches, because it's funny, sometimes I'll like coach people who have been playing for much longer than me and they like talk about these old patches and I'm always quite fascinated by it. But right, CK also got a major buff. Wow, Chaos Bolt used to be able to do one damage at level one? That is wild. Why would they make it such a variant? That's hilarious. It used to, <laughs> it actually could do one damage and got buffed up to 75. That is an insane buff, actually. So much better, actually. Skeleton walk cooldown went down. Oh, this is still the current cooldown. That's funny, they haven't touched it since then. And the ulti got massively buffed. This is when Klinks could eat the creeps frequently. I don't know if they gave him health. I feel like he just ate them and got damage, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, but yeah, wow, that was a major buff to the hero. CM also got some major buffs. Freezing field used to be in a 150 second cooldown. What in the world? to down to a 90 flat. This ability has been buffed and nerfed a million times. I think it's like 95 flat nowadays. It got nerfed up to like 120 again, but it used to be 150. <laughs> Was this ability better back in the day? I hope so, because it does not deserve to be that long of a cooldown. That's crazy. DP seemingly got a huge buff this patch as well, getting a 50% increase to her exor exorcism spirit count. I mean, it's like, I bet this actually completely skyrockets this hero into the meta, right? It's just 50% more damage at level 1 on your arguably most important ability is, is insane. Like, I feel like nowadays, I don't want to say Valve doesn't make major changes. Like, as I'm reading this patch, I'll keep it real with you guys. It's not that overwhelming. Like, there's a lot of changes, don't get me wrong. I feel like it's been a while since we've had a major patch. And maybe back in the day, there was like more frequent major patches, but I'm actually not certain on that. I, and I will say a lot of these changes are not particularly overwhelming. Like, for instance, there's like a brew change that was basically pointless. This rocket flare speed from 1500 to 1750 is important and does something, but it's not like crazy, you know? It's not gonna change the game. Poison touch level four damage from 32 to 36. It's like a lot of these things, I mean, they're not bad changes, um, but they're nothing crazy. Kinetic field duration from four to 4.4 actually does matter because it synergizes with the old better. Um, but yeah, there's not, a lot of these changes are not as crazy as I necessarily thought. This is something I do remember, actually. I remember Gyrocopter specifically had to, if I'm not mistaken, he had to stop to cast Rocket Barrage, which was so inconvenient. So this was a major buff to the hero uh, that you could chase people down and auto attack them instead of having to stand still to cast your, um, <laughs> your Q, which was so awful. Oh yeah, Huskar had... It was so funny that Huskar's old healing was one of his abilities. It was called Inner Vitality and it healed him. And you could cast it on teammates, which basically no one ever did as far as I'm concerned. But it enabled you to play Huskar support, which no one also, no one did that either. Invoker got a major buff to intelligence gain. Wow, that's crazy. And Invoke no longer triggers cooldown if it only swaps the ability slots. That's a great change. Wow, that that is actually, that's actually a great Great change. What a great change. I, I, that's crazy that that wasn't part of the game. You had to be so careful about swapping abilities around. That must have been so inconvenient. Jug got one of the biggest nerfs of the patch, seemingly. Uh, this hero must have been broken in seven point in the sniper troll patch. It must have been one of the other top carries because it got a 12 second nerf at level one to spin. Oh my gosh. I think it still sits at this, right? I think this is still the cooldown of the ability all the way back probably four or five years ago. This is still the current scaling, if I'm not mistaken. And it now has the same spell immunity on cast to spell behavior as other abilities. I don't really know what that means. <laughs> An Omni Slash no longer mini stunts on cast? <laughs> it used to cancel TPs? Part of me is now having flat, like, I don't know if I'm just making it up in my head or not, but part of me is having flashbacks to being able to cancel TPs with Omni Slash. That's really crazy. Also using items and abilities in Omni Slash no longer requires facing direction. That's a major change as well. That's that's a buff, actually. It's a pretty big buff. Mana leak. Oh my God. Oh God. Thank God they removed this. If you guys don't remember Mana Leak, Coddle used to have an ability where you just clicked it on them. I don't even think it slowed at the time. I'm pretty sure it was just mana leak, where if you moved, you would lose like all of your mana. It was rupture, but with mana instead of HP. <laughs> it's so, it wasn't even necessarily that good. Sometimes I think it was, but it was so obnoxious. And then they made the cooldown 10 seconds at max. I mean, my God, that is terrible. And this is also the patch where Chakra Magic now 
uh, adds a buff that reduces cooldown on the next spell it, its target cast by one, two, three, four seconds. Oh, oh, wow. So this ability used to be almost better because you would put it on them and then they would cast an ability and it would reduce the cooldown of that ability. But to be fair, new chalk or current chakra magic reduces the cooldown of every ability that's on cooldown. So it's kind of better actually to some extent now. Uh, but that's that's cool that it was different. I actually didn't know that. This is also the time uh, where Kunka, I actually believe, was a support because X marks the spot costed practically no mana. And the cooldown on Torrent was 10 seconds flat, which is extremely low. And basically you can max out X and then you would still have level one Torrent, which is a good stun, but it was only a 10 second cooldown and it would synergize with the max X cooldown. Uh, so that was that was really notable. I remember gaining a lot of MMR as Kunka support back in the day. He would basically play it as five or four and he would consistently gank the mid laner because X used to have also, I think, much better cast range in the early levels. It was um, just a better ability back in the day, and Torrent was also way better. And Boat, Kunga's ultimate, was a flat 40 second cooldown. It's now 80 at level 1, and scales I think 80, 70, 60 if I'm not mistaken. Uh, so this, this hero used to be way better as a utility hero, um, and could be played as a support. <laughs> what? This is a wild legion change. Alright, this is actually an insane legion change. Aghanim Scepter upgrade a Legion Commander. Duel lasts until either Legion Commander or her target dies. <laughs> what in the world? So basically what you're telling me is you could just like lock someone in place. You could just buy like Crimson Guard pipe Ags and then just like do no damage and lock someone in place. You could technically perma stun someone if the conditions were met. That's actually so funny. This would have made for great meme videos for, for sure. I don't know if anyone made a video on that, but I... That's a missed opportunity if no one bought like really defensive items on Legion and then it hags and just locked someone in. <laughs> that would have been really good. One change that's also pretty cool is Marana's Star Swarm. So it hits twice, right? And the second hit range used to be 175. That is horrible. You literally had to be directly on top of them. For a little bit of reference, it's now 625. And that was actually changed in like the most recent patch two patches ago that was changed really recently it used to be 325 so this this is what it was for like past like what three four years and now the second strike hits and this is still the same the second hit now strikes the closest unit which is still the case so that was not touched for a long time actually another hero that got some big big changes uh is that ensnare used to be undispelled which is insane that you couldn't you could not dispel ensnare i feel like if that was the case nowadays this hero would be insanely broken i don't know if it was broken then i don't think it was but it must have been insanely i mean that is gross you couldn't dispel it it's like a five second stun six second disable oh yeah this is also when they added the scepter where your ulti would regenerate you and your nearby uh, allies health by six percent of a max hp for up to seven seconds for some perspective that means you had to spend 4,200 gold for this, and it was 6%. Now, this effect, this exact same effect of healing your allies with your ult, is 8%, if I'm not mistaken. I think it's 8% on your shard, and it's 1,400 gold. It's your shard. So, they heavily overvalued this, or it's crazy undervalued now. My current take is that Naga's shard is extremely undervalued. I personally think Naga, uh, as a support, is way better than people give it credit for right now. I think this hero as a support and the potential of this hero as a support is, is way lower than it should be, in my opinion. Also, it could it can still be cast on spell immune units, which is hilarious because that's just her ags now. This hero used to be gross. It used to be a support too, which makes sense uh, with, with some of these things that you could just like root a BKB hero, which is, and you couldn't dispel it at some point, by the way. You could just root a BKB hero and they're just stuck. <laughs> it's just terrible. Cast range on Sprout was increased by 250. And the duration was increased by 0.75. Massive buffs to my boy. Uh, this is a great patch. Bring me back to this patch. Oh, this is when the treants used to actually do damage. It got buffed to 28. Bring me back to this patch. Oh my god. Also, uh, yeah, oh yeah, this was this uh, this nonsense. When you, the ags on profit, anytime a unit was killed, it would spawn a treant. It was so stupid. And then they made it linger, where I, I think when it first was introduced, it would have to literally kill it to spawn the treant. And then I think, I think they changed it where it had to linger, where it lingered. And then if the unit died like three or four seconds after it got hit by the ult, it would still make the treant. And then like you saw, there's like a bulldog video on it that inspired me to spam that hero even more than I was, which is part of the reason it's my favorite hero. It was just like such a meme hero. It's so fun. Oh God, this is the patch where Nyx Assassin became such a nuisance with this Ags. It was so good. Nyx Ags is still AIDS. This is when they added it into the game. 
Yuck. All right, so just because I do want to get into items and I want to spend a little bit of time on items, I'm not going to cover every hero, but I did want to quickly look at Wyvern because Wyvern, this hero on release, there was a lot of bad heroes on release. Wyvern was easily one of the worst, easily one of the worst. Basically, the reason why was Wyvern's ultimate's cooldown was extremely low. I think it was like 70 seconds or something like that, if I'm not mistaken. But basically, this ability, when it was first introduced, when you curse them, you could do damage to everyone affected by the curse. Nowadays, when you curse with Wyvern, it stuns everyone in the AoE. They're like locked in, right? They're locked in and basically you can't do damage to them. So they're safe. That was not the case back in the day. Now, in this patch, they changed it to 70% less damage from all sources. So you could still, and it, honestly, it was powerful. You could still do 30% of your damage. You could still have a drow ripping into someone. Yeah, they would only take 30% damage, but trust me, they would still get ripped apart for 3.5 seconds. Now, to be fair, the ability lasts longer. So it was kind of different, but yeah, here you are. It was a 90 second cooldown. So like, it was just such a short cooldown all the way down to 70. Oh God. You know, it's, it's still a very short cooldown nowadays, but it was obviously it's, it's kind of worse, right? You can't just like attack the people inside of it, which is just kind of crazy. They also, Arctic Burn was not dispellable and it pierced spell immunity. What the fuck? Oh my. And it was pure. What the? That is so bad. <laughs> It's like, dude, Valve was so over tuned these heroes. It was insane. Imagine Arctic Burn doing pure 6% of your health. It still does a ton of damage. And to be fair, they upped it from 6 to 8%, which means after resistances, it does like kind of the same damage early on. That's not assuming there's no, there's no pipe involved. There's no magic resist anything, no cloak. No pipe, no BKB. It, it wasn't dispellable. And that's just something else. And then some other changes. But all right, let's get into items. Mangos, yes. Cost 150 gold, provides one HP regen. Did you guys know that mangoes uh, are actually more cost efficient than Ring of Health? It's crazy, right? Mangoes are more cost efficient than Ring of Health. They give more regen per gold than the item that is designed to, to give specifically HP regen is insane. But they used to be 150 gold, now they're only 65, and they give 0.6. So they give way more regen nowadays. That's what I'm saying. These items are broken. They are so road broke. The items, mangoes sucked back in the day. They were actually so bad. I can't believe any, I don't think people bought them to be honest. They were awful. This is actually so horrendous. And they didn't even stack. So you could only buy one. It was, it, they were so bad actually. They are actually just bad. What can you do? They added Lotus Orb. Oh my, this was a crazy patch for items actually. Oh, this was a crazy patch for items. They added Lotus, one of the most game breaking items of Dota 2. I honestly want to eventually, I don't know if you guys are interested in this. I, I, at this point, realistically, the only people are, who are watching are like, watching the video this deep into the video are like the dedicated Dota fans. So I know realistically, you're probably going to want to want the want the video, but I'm thinking about making a video and I think it might be popular amongst all of Dota fans, but basically looking at like very notable additions to Dota, whether or not it was a new hero, a new item, a new mechanic, and just like doing like a deep dive, like a history video on how it impacted the game, the, the development of the item. I think it could be really cool, like just doing a video on Glimmer Cape and how how it's evolved over the years. I, like, because items haven't changed. Even heroes, like doing like a, a hero overview. I think that could be fascinating. It might become my new series. I think it's something that people will love. I'm going to have a ton of fun making it. It'll just be fantastic. But like this patch is just so substantial. Lotus Orb, like one of the most impactful items of, of current Dota, past Dota. It's just a crazy item. It used to give percentage-based mana regen. Oh yeah, that was a thing back in the day. That's insane. It used to give damage, that's weird. Why did it give damage? <laughs> it gave 10 armor. Okay, it still gives 10 armor. This item's near, very similar to what it used to be. It just gives flat mana now instead of, which I guess kind of is, no, percentage-based mana regen seems kind of insane. But yeah, it's still about, it's it, it's about the same. It, yeah, it dispels. So it's it's pretty crazy how this item hasn't been changed very much. And I, I think honestly on release, it was just, it's just, it's about the right cost for what it does in my opinion. It's just a great item, well-balanced item. Like, shout out Val for this one, or Ice Frog, whoever made it, whoever came up with this item, it's just a beast. I think this item was just such a great introduction to the game. It just, it, it's really, it's like just, it's just an item that gives a lot of depth to Dota, which is so cool. Glimmer Cape, on the other hand, on introduction, I think this item was broken, right? So it was Shadow Amulet and Cloak, 30 attack speed, because Shadow Amulet at least used to give uh, attack speed back in the day. So this item honestly was good on cores, but really what was broken about it was the cast range and the active giving 66% magic resist. It had a fade time and I think they had to be invisible for it to give them the resist though. Where nowadays, I think it's even if you come out of the invis, 
you're still, oh yeah, it, it specifically says it. So nowadays, I'm pretty sure the the bonus magic resist works even if you come out of the resist. Even, as long as the glimmer cape effect is on you, even if you like use an ability or hit someone, you'll still have the magic resist. Now, I mean, back in the day, it was 66%, but you had to stay in this. But the big thing was really the cast range. You could, I think it's like 600 now or 650. It, you could use, to, you used to be able to cast it from so far away. And there was also like pretty limited slots for detection. And so I, I, I used to just win as a support player by buying this item because people wouldn't buy it. They were so greedy. If you just got good at saving people with Glimmer, you could carry pubs. It's still kind of the case nowadays but it used to be so true back in the day. <laughs> if you could, were decent at using Glimmer, which like, I guess I was fortunate enough to do, it was so broken. Silver Edge, the days where I used to build for Massange, that's pretty funny. Um, Moonshard was introduced as well in this patch. Really notable items, Greaves, whatever. They're pretty decent now, but this item on release used to be really broken. Why actually? Because it was still kind of, maybe because it was slot efficient. Because like slots used to be a real problem back in the day. It's like, I guess that kind of helps. It's funny, everyone is still to this day. I I've, I mentioned this recently in a video that Greaves only dispel the hero that uses it. And there was a huge amount of people that didn't know it. That that was the case like four years ago and people didn't still don't know. <laughs> like a lot of people who buy Greaves on like Dazzle think it dispels their old team. It does not, <laughs> it still does. Moonshard was introduced. This is when I had a recipe, Silver Edge. Oh, was this the broken solar crest? This was the Octarine patch. I knew it. Oh my God. This was the, this was the Alc Octarine patch. Oh my gosh. It was also when it gave spell life steal. This item was even, it wasn't better. It was really expensive. It was really, really expensive. It's cheaper now. I'm pretty sure. Pretty sure it's cheaper now. I think it's like 5,200 now. 5,250 or something like that. It was, it was much more expensive, but yeah, th this item was also broken. The active on solar crest. So when targeting an ally, it grants them 10 armor and 30% evasion. When targeting an enemy, it reduces the armor and applies the 30% miss. And it was only a seven second cooldown, but basically like you just made one of your teammates semi-invincible. 10 armor, 30% evasion. I mean, against physical damage comps, it just ruined them. However, the big thing about this item was it actually became particularly broken after that. It was in a later patch. This wasn't this wasn't the main spike of Solar Crest. Solar Crest had a, had a patch where it was like the best item in the game. It just had crazy numbers on like how much attack speed it reduced or gave and how much armor it used to be. This item had a period of time where it was like the best item in the game. But yeah, Octarine, it was built on Alk. It, it was, that hero used to get so much gold where it could afford the expensive. Maybe I'm mistaken and it still is this expensive. Can't do the math right now. Nah, I'm pretty sure it's cheaper. Yeah, I guess, okay, I'm, I'm not gonna read through the changes, but hope you guys enjoyed this video. I know it was very different from what you're used to seeing on this channel, but I was just like, I don't know. I, I kept making match analysis. I had no build talk about like that I could find at least at the moment. And so, uh, I was just like, yeah, I don't know. This seems fun. I was I was looking through the changes. I'm like, this just seems fun. So nonetheless, thank you guys so much for watching. See you in the next one. And if you want more videos like this, let me know in the comments. Otherwise, I'm going to have no idea what you guys think. And I'll see you in the next one. Peace. And that's all. But remember, before you leave, come on, before you tune out, subscribe to the Game Leap website where we are going to help you get to the next rank. If you're stuck, click the link down below. And I'm out. Peace.